Overloads and curses are generally seen as two of the most important unlocks for PvM, but how much of a difference do they really make? And which of the two should you prioritize? That's what we'll be taking a look at in this video, so whenever you're ready, grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax, and enjoy. If you enjoy all kinds of content related to RuneScape, be sure to subscribe as around 63% of you are not yet subscribed. With that being said, let's continue. When I refer to curses, I mean the tier 95 damage and accuracy boosting curses being Turmoil, Anquish and Torment. These provide you with extra accuracy, damage and defense while also draining your opponent's stats as well. Overloads are a little bit different as they give you a plus 17% stat buff, the base version that is, which will provide you with more damage and accuracy. An interesting difference between curses and overloads is that the amount of damage percentually you gain from using overloads changes depending on your own gear. With curses, it seems to be a flat 10% damage buff. For example, when testing my minimax hit using the following setup, I was able to gain 10% damage from using just curses and 8.53% damage from using just overloads. When I turned both on, I was getting around 18.85% more damage, which is a massive increase over not using curses and overloads. When I downgraded my weapon to unaugmented chaotix, the increase from the curses stayed virtually the same, while the increase on the overloads actually increased by about 1%. This means the higher your damage bonus from items is, the less you'll benefit from the overload buff percentually. The same can be said for the accuracy bonus, as with my augmented scythe, it was 14.71% more accuracy when using overloads, and when using all augmented chaotics, it was 17.22%. So a difference of around 2.5% in accuracy, where the T80 weapons benefited more than the T90 perked out weapon. Another key difference between overloads and curses is that curses do not boost your bleed damage, what overloads do. Using the same setup and a scythe, I was able to gain a 3.34% increase to my dismember's damage on average. Now, something I usually do in my videos is do dwarven barrel tests with an action bar that is not focused on getting the most amount of damage, but focused on having a consistent rotation without ultimate abilities so that revolution can make these tests more consistent than if I would be using the abilities manually myself. I did three tests for both no curses and overloads, only curses, only overloads, and overloads plus curses. Interestingly enough, the results of these tests were very different compared to the dummy tests I did using my min and max hit and taking the average of those hits to find out how much damage I gained from using either overloads or curses. From these tests, it seemed that I only gained around 4% more damage when only using curses, 7.5% when only using overloads, and around 11.5% more damage when using overloads and curses together. All of these percentages being an increase over the DPM I had without curses and overloads turned on, by the way. Admittedly, I was using a different weapon, so I went back to dummies, and the increase with overloads turned on using a Masuta's War Spear without perks was 9.3% more damage on average. That still doesn't explain why overloads gain 3.3% more damage than curses. Now, of course, there is going to be some variance with these DPM numbers and increases because RNG is a massive factor. Abilities getting it harder or lower, it's just a thing. And a sample size of three barrel tests per type isn't going to be the biggest, most accurate test ever, and that's something I want to make clear. One thing I did notice though, is that the curses had a far larger range between those three DPM numbers than the overloads had, which were far closer to each other in terms of DPM. I also think Dismember makes a difference here, as Dismember was on the action bar, and is only boosted by the overloads themselves. Now, since I wasn't going to just leave it at the Dwarven Barrels, it was time for a more practical test, where accuracy would actually matter a little bit, but the test would still be able to be done consistently by revolution. I chose the Arc Laser with one mechanic turned on, as I think this is the best place to test average kill times. To get a good feeling of what the difference would be in practice, I did tests similar to the Dwarven Barrel test being kills with either overloads turned on or either curses and them both, but to make it even more interesting, I also added another test using curses and a Warmaster's potion being a plus 13 stat potion opposed to the overload 17. And yes, I'm aware that these potions do not constantly refresh like overloads do, so the stats do get drained over time. Now, as I wanted to see the difference between lower tier unaugmented weapons and higher tier augmented weapons, what I did is test this with a tier 82 Masuda's War Spear, which had no perks on it, my Scythe, which did have perks on it, and even a tier 90 
city without any perks attached at all. This way I could create an interesting overview and average kill time increases when comparing different types of players depending on what they have unlocked or not. Something you might be noticing in the footage with the Masuda's War Spear with that overload and cursors turned on is that I'm definitely splashing a bit on this boss. And that's where curses and overloads do come in as they increase your accuracy and your damage. The higher tier of boss you're fighting, the more the accuracy usually matters. Bosses like Araxel and the Magister have a very high defense level and using overloads and curses there are even more important, especially if the bosses have stat drain. Now let's take a look at the results using the tier 82 weapon. So when I was using curses, I saw a decrease in kill times of 17.23%. When I was using overloads, that kill time on average was 25.21% shorter. When I was using both overloads and curses, that kill time was 30.67% shorter, which is massive. Now the funny thing is, when using Super Warmaster potions and curses, I almost received the same results as when using overloads. It's worth noting that I still saw the occasional splash when using Super Warmaster potions, because over time, your stats do drain. It's worth noting that every time a kill started, I repotted on the Super Warmaster potion. When looking at the tier 90 with perks, we can clearly see that the kill time decrease percentually is actually lower, so there's less of an increase thanks to overloads and curses than when compared to the unaugmented T82. This isn't a surprise as the base accuracy of the Noxious Scythe is far higher than the T82 Masuda's War Spear. That being said, you can still splash using no overloads and curses or auras here when using a Noxious Scythe with Precise 6 Equilibrium 4. With that being said, we still receive almost a 24% decrease in kill times when using both overloads and curses. And in this case, probably due to variance in kill times and some RNG, the Super Warmaster potions did significantly worse than the overloads. Now instead of talking about percentages, how about we compare the average kill time for all of these tests using the tier 82 unaugmented weapon, the tier 90 perked weapon, and the tier 90 unaugmented weapon I also tested off camera. Now when looking at these average kill times and seconds, I'd like to point out a few comparisons that are quite interesting. First of all, when using the tier 82 unaugmented weapon, I was able to get around the same kill time as a tier 90 augmented weapon with nothing turned on, or a tier 90 unaugmented weapon with only curses turned on. Secondly, it's worth pointing out that having perks on your tier 90 weapon can make a massive difference as having just curses and an augmented tier 90 weapon is about as fast as a tier 90 augmented weapon when you also add overloads to the mix as well. It's funny to think that inventory perks, which are quite easy to obtain, can make such a large difference being anywhere from 5 to 9 seconds on kill times that only last around a minute. And the third thing I'd like to point out is that when using overloads in a tier 82 augmented weapon, you're getting getting around the same kill speeds in this specific situation as a tier 90 unaugmented weapon without overloads. Now obviously a tier 90 weapon like the Master Rick Spear, the regular one that doesn't give you the passive buff, is going to be the cheaper upgrade than getting overloads if you're level 1 Herblore. Now this doesn't mean that this is going to be the end all results for all bosses and all plays in every single situation, but it is an interesting bit of information to think about when considering upgrades for PVM. Now I also decided I wanted to try this at a Slayer task that I thought would be consistent, which would be Abyssal Demons, which respawn quite quickly in Kurdle's dungeon. But after doing one single task for each of these tests, I realized that trying this out and trying to give you any kind of numbers would have diminishing returns in terms of effort involved, because the goal of this video was to talk about how much overloads and curses matter. And there are more things to having curses like Soul Split or to overloads as you have combo overloads which you can save inventory space, you can use Sourdome and Bruise more easily, but what's the conclusion here? Well, 95 Prayer which is really fast with the powders of Penance will only set you back like 130 mil. Herbal on the other hand, if you're doing the overloads method, will easily cost you 200 to 300 mil but then you also have thousands of overloads ready to be used or to create it in combo overloads. And it's also worth pointing out that you have better tiers of overload, like Elder Overload Salves, which will increase your damage even more and arguably are the better choice. Now we shouldn't forget that Invention is a massive damage increase as well, and that's not even including armor perks, and to get 103 Invention for precise 6 equilibrium 4 on your weapon, you're only going to need like 96 Augmenters, you know, 96 Crystal Halberds, that's like 50 mil, so that's going to be quite cheap. Now, even though you'd probably get more damage with 95 Prayer, 103 Invention, and simply using Super or Grand Potions instead of Overloads, 
I'm still going to recommend that you get your overloads first and simply train on double experience weekend to avoid having to pay 280 mil and instead only have to pay 140. While I suppose they're more variables depending on what you want to do, for example soul split might be more valuable to you if you want to do a lot of slayer or you want to learn soul split flicking, but overloads can become even better than those curses as you can unlock higher to overloads like Eld Overload Salves which I didn't even test in this video. What I do hope to have made clear in this video is what kind of potential impact it could have having one thing over the other and that invention is perhaps the cheapest power creep you can obtain even cheaper than prayer and herb lore that is assuming you're starting from level one and with that being said we've come to the end of this video i hope you guys enjoyed the video and found it interesting if you did leave a like down below and maybe even consider subscribing and i'll catch you guys in the next one peace